first and foremost, like, it's a huge honor to be up here with both of you all. Um, I met you, I want to say 2016, 2017, I can't remember. Um, and then Dave, I'm just like, obviously just a massive fan of all that you've done. Yeah, complete massive fan of all that you've done. So my first question for you all is, how did you two link up on this project? Dave, no, I told you, you're leading this one. She called me. <laughs> <laughs> and when she called, it was, you know, the song's amazing. So I was like, I gotta make it happen. I was on a project and I said, I can't shoot it for a month. And she said, I'll wait. And I worked on the treatment and she told me yes, no, and yes, yes, no. And then uh, we had a treatment that she wanted to make. For you all, I mean, for you, Dave, um, I can't imagine what your inbox looks like, right? Like, I was just looking at your IM VDB today, just, like, just going through everything. What is the, I'm not gonna say criteria, is it all feeling for you? Like, what is the moment that you say, hey, I'm gonna take this project, you know, um, when I imagine uh, Little Sims and many others are hitting you up? That's a complicated one to answer. Uh, it is a vibe, it starts with a vibe. You know, uh, I immediately fell in love with this song, with Sims, as soon as I looked up all of her work, is like, I see what I can bring to it. And then, and then from there, that's like stage one. Stage two is getting on the phone, we talk, and just seeing if she trusts me. And then stage three is writing a treatment, and that, that goes a little bit back and forth. And, and uh, most of the time, it stays on, on course. And it did for us. And so it's just like it's a multi-tiered thing of like five or six stages. And Sims, for you, why, why this song, right? You got 10 joints on the project. Why Gorillaz? And, and I'm not going to ask why Dave Myers, but like, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel, I feel like it was one of the songs that, <clears throat> for me, was one of the most boisterous um, sounding. It was very grand. Um, it was a chance for me to like, I don't know, just be really unapologetically myself and be witty and, you know, have humor, but then be able to uh, really go back to my roots, hip hop. Hopefully I did it a good service. Um, but yeah, I think the song is very telling of my roots and what I was listening to and what I've been inspired by. And obviously growing up on, on Dave's work and knowing his work, it's like there's there's no one better to kind of execute this and be able to I guess visually put across everything I was feeling in the song when I wrote it. So um, yeah, perfect match, I reckon. What is that experience like? I mean, I think today we, um, we get music videos or videos with music, you know? And sometimes it's like two scenes, three scenes, you know? It's sort of like get the car, smoke the blunt in front of the car, and like then you switch, you're on the other side of the car. You know what I mean? Um, um, so it's like 16 scenes, over 15 scenes in a world where like, we're just watching TikToks, right? Um, what was the decision to make that level of commitment for a project like, well, for a song like this? I think it's just interesting to like capture, uh, like I said, different elements of my personality. There's stuff in there where I'm really reserved. There's stuff in there where I'm really, my performance is quite extroverted. Um, the skateboard scene, I was like, fucking hell, David, you sure? Like, you're going down this, this parking lot and they had me strapped up. I was like, yo, this is, I don't know. But I think that's where you got to have trust and that's where Dave's uh, great at making. I think every artist wants to work with an artist, a real artist director, which means that as much as they care about the visual aspect, there's such a um, level of care to how the artist is feeling on set, you know, because you're vulnerable, like you're in front of the camera, you're using your body, it's like, that's not an, that's not an easy task, even though it comes across effortlessly and it, and it looks like, oh, you just do this, it's still like very, you've got a whole set of people watching you and you're just there, it's like, that can be very intimidating, but I think Dave was great at making someone feel, well, I say someone, me, feel relaxed and um, just like, take your time, you know, it's very patient, very like, we had lots of conversations just about each scene. Um, and I think for me that allowed me to, okay, I know I'm in a safe space, so I'm able to let loose and have fun and just do what I came to do. Now you mentioned all the sides of you, but like, I think one theme that stands out is just such a playfulness, right? Like, I mean, the song is crazy because it's like, if you were to listen to it without the visuals, it feels like you're just barring everybody up. But then when you see the visuals, it adds a playful nature to it. Why was that important for you to communicate that? 
because uh, I think everyone thinks I'm a bit serious, <laughs> and I, th I, I get it. Like obviously, my music's very introspective, and you know, it requires you to headphones and listen. Um, but I think I just wanted to get across that I'm not always a serious person, and it's okay to have fun and let my hair down, and uh, yeah, just be a bit spontaneous with it. I think, yeah. Another theme I feel like, I'm just like adding shit in here that I think I saw, um, but another theme I feel like I saw throughout the video is just multiplicity, whether it was um, the many bodies in the video or the many heads or the fractured kind of facial expression. Um, what was the significance of that for either of you? <laughs> uh, God, where would I start? Um, it's not really a theme, but I think as Sims was saying, like the, the plurality of setups and, and what we're exploring is almost like, uh, for me, it's like crayon colors, you know? So my, my task is to, to kind of complement what, what she is and what she's wanting to put out in the world. We connected Im immediately over uh, early Busta stuff. And I, I heard it in the song, she heard it in her, her you know, well, she created the song. And, and, and so we just, we anchored off of that and just tried to get all the various aspects of how she performs and what, what kind of flavors. We were just playing. It's like playing in a sandbox. And I think, um, yeah, I, I don't think there was a, I don't know, it wasn't like a strong, yeah, it was, you kind of, it's kind of experimental. Mm. You know, we're trying, we're playing, we're seeing what works. We, you know, we adjusted, like she said, we did a couple setups that we circled back on and we're like, oh, yeah, it wasn't quite right. And then we came back and did it right. Yeah. What happened with the office? Like, the, even the first scene of me in the cowboy hat, I remember, like, I wasn't originally wearing that. And, um, I don't know, I just looked at the dancers, I was thinking, nah, man, I wanna, I wanna be amongst them, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wanna feel like I'm, I'm really part of this band. And maybe it's this one uh, item of clothing that differentiates me, which was the hat. But otherwise, you know, get me in that, whatever they was wearing, them jerseys, put that over my head, um, and I'll, I want to feel a part of it. Um, and that was a last minute change. I remember we were so behind. I knew Dave was stressed. He wasn't trying to show me, but I just knew everyone was like, ah, the last minute change, last minute change. But um, yeah, I think it worked perfectly. So when I saw the skating, I was wondering, was it actually hooked to the skateboard in that way or? I was. Uh, I'm not trying to get either of you in trouble, like, but. No, I was on a, I was on a skateboard and then there was like a, like a moving cart which had a camera. I think one of the shots, uh, the DOP actually gave me the camera to shoot my POV. So I was going down the ramp like, with this camera in my hand, shooting my feet. Um, but yeah, otherwise I was just hooked up and then we had to go back up the, the parking lot and then go back down again. So then I was like, okay, this went right over. I was like, all right, I believe you. It went right over my head. Outside of those setups, is there another one that stands out particularly that was just fun or one that you knew you really wanted to get in? What, like, maybe it was one that you saw in Dave's work that you were like, okay, we want to try to feature this. Um, I think one of my favorites is the towards the end with the, the headless men in the field. Um, I just remember watching that playback. Obviously, in the video, their heads are not there, but on the day they had like a, a, green, a green, almost balaclava kind of okay. situation. Um, but it looked wicked, and I just remember watching the playback and being, "Wow, this is this is gonna be a really cool scene," and I was pretty excited about that. Um, and then the scene with the the jackets, the Montclair stuff. Um, but yeah, I think for me, um, you know, obviously, like we met years ago, um, <clears throat> like at Pigeons and Planes, right? So this is like 2016, 2017. You watch artists level up over time, whether it's their budgets increase, their audience increase, their vision increases, their creative power increases, um, and usually their music videos get a lot better. It's usually, some people's music videos get better. Um, and for yours, right, what does the music video as a medium afford you uh, when it comes to communicating with your audience? I just always want to do right by the music, you know. I'm a very visual person, um, even when I make music, like I envision colors and I can kind of see what the video is going to be like and I just try and do right by the song. That's always my thing, you know what I'm saying? If it if it don't enhance the song, uh, it's cool, like it doesn't need a visual. Um, and then also being able to do my research on people that I really respect, obviously Dave, um, and be like, okay, that'll be a cool pairing for that. 
you know, who, whoever else, it, like Gabriel Moses, who's a wicked filmmaker from London. I know his stuff is really moody and has a has a different kind of energy, so that'll be great for that. And just try and pair it in ways that I know is gonna do right by the music, you know what I'm saying? And try and, um, yeah, because I know I'll get I'll get more out of myself. And uh, yeah. I mean, for me, I think the music video really is a um, like a sacred art form, right? That's like I just remember when it was appointment television, like you said, watching at your grandma's house. Um, but a lot has changed over the years, right? And the ways that you guys are trying to find new ways to iterate, the technology's changing, the audience is changing. So Dave, I'm curious for you, over the years, what is a positive that you've seen in the music video field of how it's changed? Sure, yeah. uh, gone through a few, few rounds of that one. Uh, yeah. It used to be uh, just, a, you know, you, when YouTube came around, I'm gonna sound real old, um, uh, it all changed to a more sort of uh, 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 like artist artistry came out, you know, like the budgets dropped, but 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 the the f you know MTV sort of had a like only like twenty videos in rotation, so you either were the chosen one or you were out, you know, and so it left a lot of people that were talented not in that little group, and then that little group it was like MTV was driving the look and every, you know like everybody wanted to there was homogeny. YouTube sort of created uh, individuality, I guess, and, and, and I think we're a few years into that. And I think we're on another cusp now with, with what AI is gonna be able to uh, permit the next you know, sort of wave of, of creativity. You know, I've seen people make music videos with AI in their apartment, and I just think that the scale of what I've been able to do with budgets is just gonna continue to, I mean, even I'm, you know, what I could do with a budget now is way different than what I could have done ten years ago. So it's it's uh it's it's like a constantly evolving form, you know. And the things that make me the most excited is like this with Microsoft funding it. I did something with Deutsche Telekom that funded a Katy Perry thing back in the day. I, I think when corporations link up with artists and they allow the artists to do the artists, like Microsoft didn't ask Sims to do anything other than you know show up and shoot her video. And that, and the same when uh, you know a couple of co times the corporations come along and they do that, it's a beautiful harmony. And and I think videos really need it. Uh, movies have uh, a respect system that's well in play. Uh, commercials are, whatever you know, well funded. Videos are sort of like this little wild west art form that permeates culture. is more influential than movies in a lot of cases, and uh, and yet it struggles to get the kind of attention and budgets. A lot of times those three setup videos you're talking about are artists that don't get the money. It's all their money. Yeah, it's, 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 a, the, it's their money or, or, they, or they don't even have the money or, or the labels aren't giving them the money. And that's a, str well, Sim should talk about that. <laughs> but uh, that's a struggle that I'm on the receiving end of that because I'll, I'll get what I'm told is the ceiling. And it's like, oh, but if I, even if I think the music's worth, oh man, I wish, what would we do with a million dollars, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and so I just, I'm rambling, but that yeah, it's 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 constantly evolving, and it, and it's a, and it's a craft that constantly permeates culture. Well, I'm also I'm also curious. I mean, with tech, um, how has collaboration changed over time for you? Uh, it's sort of like how do you denote loose collaboration? Uh, so, oh gosh. Uh, well, there's the with the industry collaborations, and then there's my personal career. Um, and so industry-wise, I think it was a little bit more of a party back in the day. Like it was like videos was sort of like the, you made it. So artists were a lot more like in party mode and there was a lot more party videos and things like that. I mean, there's still some of that, but YouTube brought around like the birth of the influencer. And so artists, uh, I remember Rihanna was the first one that showed up with a mood board. You know, like an artist didn't even care prior to that. They cared, but it was like, it was all just sort of a vibe. And then she started showing up, and when I did that, I, I, that was at least for me, that was the first artist that I saw sort of show up with like an idea of what they're about. And then, and then from that, all the artists that came after her are well-developed brand managers of them, of them uh, in a way that, you know, whether you feel that way or not, you're 10 times more aware of who you are than, you know, artists of the past were in their moment, and I think that that is great. And then I think it's just continuing. I think the, the tools that are the, the next generation of, you know, it's constantly evolving, right? So it's, it just gets more and more sharp. So, so the collaborations become a little bit more uh, 
you know, pointed and focused. Like I'm, you know, I, I, I really enjoy the collaboration now because it's like you're building something together, and that that uh, is less and less when when you go way back. You know, I had like Missy and Pink were like the only two that ever had that conversation with me. You know, whereas like Sims and I have been talking for three months, and you know, hey, you like this, you like that. Hey, what about this color? You know, like and that collaboration is beautiful and makes it more fun to do. Sims, for you, what a, like what is an ideal collaboration? How does that manifest in a project like this? Um, I think trust. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think trust in um, who you're collaborating with. You know, I know Dave's gonna show up and bring himself, bring his, his skills, his taste. Um, and I'm very trusting of that and, and same, you know, I hope, <laughs> with me. Um, and then also, you know, when, I, when he's showing me stuff and stuff that I might be like, mm, can we change that? Can we, he's like very okay and open, you know what I'm saying? And I think it's nice to work with people that are not so like stuck in their ways. And like, I've always done it this way. And so I'm gonna continue to do it this way because that's safe. You know, I think it's nice when like, People are open to taking risks and being like, oh, a bit scary, but I'm here for it. You know what I'm saying? I got you, you got me, we're good. So I think, um, yeah, I'd say trust is a big thing and just being open. You're also in a time now where it's like you and the audience have such a direct relationship. Um, and you're doing what you're doing in videos like this, what you're doing online with your, um, you know, your sort of AI customizable music video, what you've done, your presence and all your other music, you, you know, your world building. Um, how is that? over time change the way fans interact with you, right? Like in the beginning, it's like they get an MP3 or a stream or a YouTube link. And now they see you, they get your sense of humor. You're connected to other collaborators like Dave. How has that changed the way that fans interact with your art and you? Um, I don't know, I just think it makes you more personal. It makes you feel like you can touch the person, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not so far of a reach. It's like, oh, she can literally be my neighbor. Like there's, there's this like, connection where I think, at least for me anyway, my supporters are very like, uh, very caring people and they care about Sims, the person, as opposed to just the artist, which is really beautiful. And I, and I think um, that technology has a, has a lot to do with that. But it's also gauging like their, um, what they're drawn, drawn to. I know Gorilla was, when I put out the album, it was one of the songs that really had a massive impact, I guess. Um, and you just kind of read the room to be honest, and be like, all right, cool, that's what people are taken to, like, let me let me give them that, and let me, um, yeah, cater to that in a sense. And for you all, I mean, obviously, a big part of the reason we're here today is to talk about uh, the way you've worked with AI on this video. And I feel like if you were to go on Twitter right now and bring up AI, there <laughs> there's like, I'm not gonna say hesitation, but there is a fear of the unknown. And you two decided to um, find ways that would iterate the art that you're making. Um, so what was the decision, I guess, to say yes to that, right? And then also um, to go into it with a sense of confidence and playfulness instead of um, like hesitation. AI? Yeah. I had a couple conference calls. I was confused. I said, what do they actually need me to do? It ultimately came down to shooting. <laughs> Well, but I mean, it, it's it's part of the beauty of Microsoft. I mean, I would celebrate what they did. They, you know, they sought out Sims, they sought out the track, they sought out a collaboration, they sought out uh, the patience that the you know that she has to like let, allow the AI whatever whatever the experience is. I'm kind of excited to actually see what it is. <laughs> um, but I think it also I think being aligned with AI is is uh, you know whether it's whether there's you know whether the future is Mad Max or Star Trek, it's it's uh, it's happening. And uh, and we're in this moment, um, and so I think that it, uh, it, it it's not something you can really ignore. It's a new tool in the toolkit, and uh, so I'm actually curious uh, and excited that there was an opportunity to play around. All we had to do is shoot some blue screen. Yeah. Well, I can uh, tell you guys, I got a chance to mess around with it upstairs, and what it does, it, it seems like it allows you to iterate the music video over time. So some of the plates you guys shot, Sims, you're in there performing in front of the video. And for me, I think the biggest takeaway was like, the music video is ultimately like a static piece of material. Like what, the way you guys shoot is the way it plays every time. And the music video used to feel so, you know, you'd sit home for 106 in Park or something. We're giving them a ton of like 
BZ, what's up? Um, but like, you know, it's, you would wait for them to play the whole video. Sometimes the video would be too high on the countdown and they'd play a short snippet and then throw the credits. I hated that. Right? <laughs> and I feel like for this, um, it's changed it. It's not just something you watch once or if you're crazy like me, I watch them on 50% speed so I can see everything, right? Like, you don't do that? All right. Guess I'm like, every time I say it, I'm like the only one. All right. So you get it. We're like friends, right? Like this is like a thing? Yeah, okay. Um, but I would say like what this thing has done is this turned this into almost like a video game, right? It's constantly iterating. Um, so yeah, that's the experience. You guys should check it out. I'm, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm talking like I, like, like I made the video. But um, you know, possibilities like that to me, I think change what artistry can be. Um, and I think for someone like yourself, it opens up the door for you to be like, hey fans, get a chance to check this out and also iterate on it. Um, yeah, I guess. I don't know, I shouldn't have ended that. I, like, I kind of like stole the thunder there. Um, what's my last one I want to go with? Well, yeah, I guess, you know, with this, what do you want fans to take away from this experience in this music video? From the video? Um, I don't know, I just want them to enjoy it. Like, I'm very proud of it. I'm proud of what we, you know, done and what we worked on. It was, you know, it was a fun two days, but it was, it was a lot of work and, you know, they've put so much time into it. Like you said, it was going back and forth for months just trying to get it right. So all in all, I just want people to enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? I don't, um, yeah, that's it. You know, I just want to continue to make great art and just do it with people that are super talented and good people. Dave's a very, very lovely person and um, that's all. I shouldn't have thrown shade on the like three setup video. I don't know why I did that. I'm really sorry. If you were out there with the three setup video, it's cool. Like we can get a four soon. But for this one, it's it's wildly impressive. I think anytime uh, you make music, I'm tapped in. Anytime you make a music video, I'm tapped in. And for you guys to connect on this, I think is just one of the iller ones. And for me, it feels like a, like an oddly slow year in music and art sometimes. Yeah. Okay, so we do agree on this. Like it feels like it's not flat, but you're waiting to feel excited. And when I saw the the um, the preview of this, it got me excited. So I just want to thank you guys for that. And thank you guys for pulling up. And you guys should check out the experience. So yeah, that's kind of it.